Server-side rendering, or SSR, has evolved dramatically since its inception in the 90s. Initially popularized by PHP, it gave the web a much-needed performance boost over just serving static files. Over time, as apps became more interactive, rendering shifted client-side, offering developers more flexibility. But, with increasing demands for interactivity, bundle sizes exploded, and page load times suffered, an especially large problem in our increasingly mobile-oriented world. Today, SSR, combined with client-side hydration, is a common answer to these problems, offering improved load times and better SEO. Let's dive into how you can implement this in Lustre, the top web framework for Gleam, to make your apps blazingly fast. Just a heads up, this is the second video in a series about Lustre, and we're going to be building on top of the Pokédex app from last time. You won't need to know anything about that project to understand this video, but I'm going to assume you have at least some knowledge of how Lustre and its message-based architecture work. If this isn't the case, go and watch the previous video in the series, and then hurry back. Ready? Great! As a quick reminder, this is what our Pokédex app looks like now. It's pretty good. We can choose a Pokémon from our list of cached mons, or we can search for our favorite using the search input. However, we have some pretty annoying issues, especially on slow internet. Firstly, we see a blank white page before any content is loaded onto the screen. And once we get some content, we have to wait again for our list of cached Pokemon to come through. This happens because, by default, Lustre applications are single page apps. Essentially, we just have a very small HTML scaffold, some CSS, and a JavaScript file. The client is then responsible for executing that JavaScript to produce the DOM elements that make up the app. Finally, we have the API calls we need to get all our data to the page. Because it takes some time for that JavaScript to come through, our users may be stuck looking at our empty scaffold for some time. You can work around this using something like a NoScript tag, but your page still won't be showing much in the way of useful content. It can also be a problem for SEO. Not every crawler will wait for JavaScript to load and execute before beginning to index your site, meaning indexes can end up incomplete. Server-side rendering, or SSR, works by generating the full HTML page on the server the page then loads as soon as the HTML arrives on the user's client, and our JavaScript simply needs to reconstruct that state, which has usually been encoded in the HTML markup, avoiding expensive API calls. That way, the user sees something pretty much immediately, and so do the site crawlers. In our case, we already have a simple Wisp web server set up, which is currently acting as our backend API. Our Pokemon cache also lives in memory on the server, so it makes sense to generate our HTML close to our data and serve the front end from the same server. The first thing we need to do is install Lustre on our server with Gleam Add. We can then use Lustre's HTML builder to recreate the page scaffold we'd normally use in our Lustre app. If you're lazy like me, you might want to save yourself some time by pasting Lustre's generated HTML into this tool, created by Louis Pilfold, that'll convert it into Lustre code. It needs some minor tweaks, but it'll get us 90% of the way there for free. Normally, this would be all the HTML you'd serve with a Lustre app, but because we want to server-side render all of our content, we're going to turn this into a function. It'll take a Lustre element as the only argument and place that within our app div in the body. We can then combine Wisp's HTML body function with Lustre's to document string builder to return the generated HTML as a response. If we spin up our server and navigate to the home page, we'll see that we now get a HTML scaffold complete with title meta tags and all the other goodies. Getting our content to render on the server is also really straightforward. Gleam allows us to specify other Gleam projects on our local machines as path dependencies using, you guessed it, the relative path of the project. In this case, I've copied the Pokedex client from the last episode and placed it alongside the server code in a monorepo-like direction. Directory. We've already written a view function in the client project with our page content, so we can save ourselves some time by reusing it. All the code for this is on GitHub, by the way, so feel free to check it out after the video. And while you're down in the description anyway, you might as well click that subscribe button. I'll be doing more Lustre videos in the future, including server components, live view, and routing. In our server's gleam.toml file, we can specify our client project as a path dependency using the syntax here. The path is that of the client project directory, and it's relative to the gleam.toml file. Once done, it's worth running Gleam Depth update to make sure everything is properly linked up, and then you're off to the races. We can now use any public code from our client project in our server. Let's head over to the client and make sure our view function is public, as well as any types that function depends on. Notably, this includes our model and message types, as well as types within our model, such as can load and, theoretically, the Pokemon type. In our case, though, we're not going to be using SSR to pre populate a selected Pokemon, so we can leave this one private for the time being. Finally, back in our server router, we can import the view function and the model constructor, create a model with a list of Pokemon from our cache, and pass that into the page scaffold. Our new page now renders and looks... Oh, 
there's no styling, and the buttons aren't interactive. Of course, we're missing the final step of the SSR process. We still need the JavaScript and CSS that we would need in a client-side rendering context, so we need to serve it. Thankfully for us, Wisp comes to the rescue again with the serve static middleware. This will serve static files from the specified directory using our desired prefix. We can use the wisp.priv directory function with the name of our project, server, to get a path to a directory called priv in the root of our project. This is one of those things that's convention over configuration in Gleam, but it's the same directory that Luster uses when building its artifacts, so it's probably best to stick with it here too. Speaking of Luster's artifacts, we're going to need them here so we have something to serve. We have two options here. We could copy the files by hand every time we build our front end, but that's definitely going to lead to problems. The better solution is to modify our Luster build command by adding the outdir argument. Now we can build our CSS and JS files straight into the priv directory. Our page is finally beautiful and interactive. You may have noticed a problem though. Even though we're populating our list of Pokemon on the server, we're still seeing that we're having to fetch them all again when the JavaScript loads. Did we do all of this for nothing? Actually, no. We're just missing the last piece of the puzzle. When Luster boots up, our init function from the client project is called, setting the model to its default state, a default state that happens to include no Pokemon. So we clearly need to make sure it starts with some mons, but how do we do that? This is where hydration comes into play. Effectively, we're going to encode our starting state as JSON on the server, store it in HTML somewhere, and then load it in later on the client side. Back in our server project, we can update our page scaffold function to take a JSON string and insert it into a script tag with the application JSON type and the ID model. Again, since we only care about the list of initial Pokemon, we can simply encode that as a JSON list of strings, saving us from writing custom encoders and decoders for our model type. Naturally, if you wanted to hydrate other states as well, you wouldn't be able to take this approach, and you'd have to write encoders and decoders for the whole model. I'd probably recommend keeping these in your client project so they're co-located with your model type, still available in both projects. Projects. On the client side, we can grab the model from the HTML using the plinth library, decode this in our main function, and pass it as the initial value to our init function. Now, when we create the initial model, it'll already have all of our Pokemon. We should also change our initial effect to effect.nom to make sure we're not performing unnecessary API calls. And that's pretty much it. When our page loads, it's already pre-rendered and populated with our Pokemon, even on slow internet connections. Our site is now much faster and more SEO friendly. Of course, as with anything, we can go a little further to tidy up. The eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that we're actually currently maintaining two separate Pokemon types, one on the server that gets stored in the cache and used in battles, and a subset of that type used on the client. Path dependencies to the rescue once more. By creating a third Gleam project, shared, and including it as a path step for both the server and client project, we create a place to house shared logic and types. In this case, we can simply copy our Pokemon type from the server project, write a quick decoder to use on the client, and use this from both of the other projects. This will allow us to clean up duplicated code and gives us type safety across the front end and back end, completely for free. Pretty snazzy, right? As a bonus, you can use this sort of approach when building client-side rendered apps too. It's not only for SSR. For the deployment curious, here's an example sample Docker file you could use to deploy an app like this. Using the latest Gleam Erlang Alpine image, we just build the client artifact into the server directory, build the server as an Erlang shipment, and run the app, making sure to expose our port. Simples. So to recap, we took two completely separate Gleam projects, combined them using path dependencies, and set up SSR and hydration in Luster in the process. That's a lot for one video, but I hope you can see that all in all. Adding SSR and hydration to your Luster apps isn't that much work. If you've decided Luster's not your bag, and you want to learn how to include JavaScript or Erlang code in your Gleam apps to create your own web framework, that video is on the left. YouTube, however, thinks you'll prefer the one on the right. I'll let you decide. See ya!